All right, that time again, time for another solo overnighter in the woods. And this time I'm thinking we're gonna do a multiple tarp shelter for a group setting. Let's get to it. All right, so this is a bucket list item, and yes, my bucket list goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, I want to do a group shelter. I haven't done that. I've got a lot of people asking me about it. So a group shelter means multiple tarps. Everybody's got a, or an emergency tarp, or some type of tarp system with them. Everybody's going to get together. They're going to brainstorm. They're going to combine their tarps to create a larger structure that's rigid, that's more semi-permanent, that will keep the weather, the elements, the rain, snow, wind off of them and allow multiple people to sleep under it. So with that mindset, let's get to it. Now, before we get too far down the trail and somebody says, where do I get those tarps? Even though I've said it about three times in my videos, I'll go ahead and tell you. There's two options with these. One is Self-Reliance Outfitters and there's a Pathfinder shelter kit. You actually get shelter uh, stakes, tent stakes, uh, roll of bank line, and I think paracord, or you can buy the tarp by itself. And I believe it's around $30 and change or something like that for the kit, or I think $20 and change for the tarp itself. Um, on my Amazon influencer page, it is an Arcturus tarp. And I still believe it's around 20 bucks and change for the tarp itself in those different colors. So you have options. And both those links are found inside my description box. So what we're doing here is the first time on my channel, I'm utilizing duct tape in combination with arbor knots from my bank line to create a structure. Why? Because I teach and preach using the items in your kit. And so far in all of my videos, I've used duct tape for repairs and fire starting, never for shelter building. So let's think outside the box and continue on with this and see where we go. All right, so I went ahead and swapped out the orange ones for my ground tarp. I might use those for the side walls, but I'm thinking we do some type of configuration like a barn, rounded like this with side walls. Thank <laughs> you. 
the 8x10 tarp is on and it's got that rounded roof appearance, kind of like a barn like I was talking about. So the horizontal right here, I'm going to run a wall there, a wall on the back side, and we got two more tarps. So either a third wall in the back, or I can go for four walls and give me a roll-up door. So let's see how it all works out. Taking that tarp right there and putting it on the outside and then over the top of my horizontal allows me to gauge or adjust the height of this wall. This is the excess right here. Instead of having that bunched up at the bottom, I can simply do it the opposite, pull it over the top, and then secure it to my verticals using an arbor knot. For those that follow my Instagram page, you notice that over the summer I acquired some new skillets. And these are cold handle skillets. They date from around 1880s, 1890s. And they're still perfectly functional to this day. They take the place of those old cast iron ones that weigh a ton. These weigh ounces. Now the one you see me use all the time is an actual cold handle number 39 skillet. And you can see that it's seasoned right there. So I'll place this down that way you can see the size differences and you can also see what the seasoning looks like versus non-seasoned. So here's my number 39 cold handle that I use every morning for breakfast. And here's a 39 and a half. This company name right here is a symbol, just like Prince, turn himself into a symbol. Boom, I can do this all day. Now the one that I'm excited about though is this number 70. And the same company name is a symbol. <laughs> But you can see the size difference, 39 and a 70. This one right here is probably a 10 inch skillet in real life. Um, weighs probably less than half a pound. And all we gotta do is season both these bad boys. And to do that, I'm gonna use a pound and a half of bacon.
Now that we have our burn in right there, our indentation, we can carve our Pac-Man pie notch and I want to go ahead and clean this tip off right here to get fresh material and then we're going to go for an ember. Probably should have mastered my craft for another 14 years before I showed you how to do that. Just saying. People get all scientific with this. All I do is I scrape out all the hard pieces in there that are like compacted and sort of like hardened on the skillet. Once that's done, I have two options. I can flip it over and put it in the fire or just heat it back up, get that small layer of oil in there and then just wipe her out. And that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing. While we're doing this, we're getting a small one ready for tomorrow's breakfast. And I give you the infamous bacon salad. And infamous means more than famous. Someone's gonna say, no it doesn't, it means this. Google Three Amigos. It's an Easter egg movie reference. My monkeys, my circus. Mm. Perfection.
the food of the gods. Catch you all in a few. And that is the down and dirty way to actually season the skillet. Um, like I said, there's all kinds of scientific ways you can look up on YouTube. And professional chefs would see this and have a heart attack, a stroke, and die. Um, but I'm just going to get this. I'm going to go ahead and if you want to save the grease, you can. But get it towards about like this and then wipe it down. And that's exactly what I do every single time. And we should be good with this one right here for tomorrow's breakfast. So with that, I'm going to wipe her down and then we're going to move on. Bacon salad, bomb ass, just saying, probably had too much lettuce on it, um, too many carrots as well, but good as F, and we got two skillets that were seasoned. Now, the shelter, um, multi-tarp shelter, we'll talk about in the morning. The front is open because it is hot, but I can take that ground cloth and do the same thing to the front that I did in the back and actually have a roll-up door, so I'm digging it. Um, and everything is underneath the roof, so if it were to rain, it should stay dry. But yeah, I'm digging that. So, multi-tarp shelter in the woods. Other than that, got coffee time in the morning. Talk about some other stuff that's on my mind. Um, I'm gonna lay here and decompress. So go. You know, it was a hard week for me. Um, enough said. I want to sit out here, listen to the night sounds, and just enjoy the remainder of the summer. So, gonna get cold here real fast. So, with that, catch you all in the morning. not as humid but it's still humid yeah I'm just laying here covered in sweat uh, do that time as in coffee time got bugs crawling around right there Not bad. Not bad. The spam's actually got an entirely different taste. Yeah. It's good. Really good. And this uh, cold handle number 39 and a half that we seasoned up last night worked out perfectly. Mm hmm? Yep. Get you all a few. Nest crap bay, cheap but effective. So we're gonna talk about our shelter. We touched on it last night. Multi-tarp shelter for a group setting in a longer term survival situation. Utilize total of four tarps, five including the ground cover. The ground cover could actually be placed on this fourth wall right here and given a roll up door for inclement weather. So it worked out well. Best part is we utilize duct tape from our kit in combination with our bank line to conserve bank line. And believe it or not, this worked out well. 
um, I'm happy with that. That's the first on my channel. So, duct tape, 10 million and two uses. And there we go, solo overnight, building a multiple tarp shelter in the woods. More great things to come. With that, all the gear in my videos can be found in three places. One, my Amazon influencer page, and two, my Self-Reliance Outfitters influencer page. If you're interested in Corporal's Corner merchandise, that can be found on Teespring. All three links are found inside my description box. Now, please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm going to catch you next time. Now it's time for Corporal's final thoughts. Been doing some thinking, and there's three types of people. One, person A, never achieves their goals, never meets their life dreams, it never happens for them, and they just go through life, one job to the next, one day to the next, and in the end, when they sit there in their deathbed, they're full of regrets. Option two, or person number two, here's them, here's their goal or goals, they start out, and end up doing segues, start overs, do overs, curly cues, up around, and then they meet their goal or goals 30 to 50 years later. And on the deathbed, they take that breath, I made it. But they never got a chance to enjoy it. Or option three or person C, the shortest distance between two points, here's them, here's their goal, is a straight line. Once they're here, they can assess the situation, look around and say, now I know it's possible for me. Now I'm gonna try for this goal and this goal and fulfill that dream. Which person are you? There's no wrong answer. Think it over. Until next time, take care of yourself and each other.